It's a stunner out here this morning in Playa del Carmen, February 2021. And today I've got a video for you all about what we call the Trinity, okay? I had a whole lot of questions this week about how to generate attraction in the conversation, how to generate tests, and a kind of a good rule of thumb that you can follow in order to, to generate a whole lot of attraction material in your game. Kind of rules of thumb to make it easy for yourself to draw on attraction generating things to say and then getting yourself into a test loop which is essentially banter which gives chemistry to the interaction which makes you stand out from other guys it gets the girl really aroused and that's going to help you to pick up girls that much more effectively so from this beautiful location here in Playa del Carmen see if I can get a little bit of beach down here on this angle let's delve right into today's video Now I'm in Playa del Carmen doing a four week natural. I've had three new students arrive here into Mexico. And just like many, many students, you guys out there watching videos just like this, you're probably a little boring, lacking a little bit of attraction, a little bit of chemistry, a little bit of spark in your conversation. And you might hear these, these terminologies like having chemistry, having banter, um, being able to make a girl laugh, creating attraction in your, in your game you may not really know what that means. And one of the big reasons why these students are a little lacking in expression and a little, you know, you could call it boring. You know, honestly, if you're not being expressive and colorful with your, lang with your language, you're being a little bit boring and that's just gonna make the girl one. One, she's gonna categorize you as a boring type of guy. She'll be polite to you, she'll be fair to you, she'll be nice to you, but then she'll walk away and be far more interested in one of the guys with more colorful language, okay? And the reason why a lot of you guys are, you know, I could say boring, or you don't have colorful language, or you're uninteresting in the way that you speak to girls, is because that if you say something emotional or expressive, that means that you're taking a risk where you could be faulted, challenged, or essentially lose the girl. So picture this, imagine you, you see a, a gorgeous girl in the bar, and yes, you get the balls to walk up and go and speak to her, and then when you actually speak to her, you're like, shit, she's not running away, this is amazing, I wanna keep this conversation going, so you play it as safe as possible. That obviously is not gonna be not gonna be good at all. Playing it safe as possible is asking all these kind of safe questions. Where are you from, what do you do? Conversational business-like questions, which no one can criticize you for. But it's also a massive stifling on yourself and a limitation on your expression. And as I said, it categorizes you as one of the, the boring types of guys that the girl is gonna meet right out here. <laughs> so. The way, the way that we describe this in the four-week natural, an easy way to remember it, introducing this concept, it's going into my future program called the four-week natural mastermind. The concept is called the Trinity, one, two, three, okay, the Trinity. And when I'm with the students in the bar, I do this, and they're like, oh shit, I need to remember my Trinity. Now, the Trinity is three things. There's three flavors of attractive conversation that drive the conversation, that set you apart from other guys, and is gonna elicit emotions in the girl. And it's, you know, ideally, and what we wanna do is we wanna elicit tests. We want the girl to be testing us, giving us sass, so that we can give the sass back, okay? The minute that you can do or use the trinity, and that is positives, negatives, and sexuals, the minute that you can do these three is the minute that the girl is gonna think, oh, this guy is confident enough, he has balls enough to open his mouth, show some passion, challenge me and to share his sexual state in a way that a, a guy without balls, a guy who's not confident and a guy who is not an alpha essentially, a guy who's worried about other men, who's stifled by competition with other men, he can't do that. And so she thinks, yes, he's a real man, he's confident in himself, he's willing to deal with my banter and my sass, that's the chemistry that you're, you're looking for, that's the thing that's going to make these interactions stand out. And this should be all throughout, all throughout your interaction, all throughout your relationships, and even all throughout marriages, because it also translates to, it evolves to being self-amusement. You know, if you're kind of trolling or being passionate or sharing your sexual desires, that's you essentially kind of turning yourself on and extending that shared feeling to the person that you're talking to. Ultimately, it all naturally works. The trick is for you guys to overcome that fear of not doing it in the first place, 
and then what does that translate to? What does it actually sound like or look like when you use the positives, the negatives, and the sexuals? All right, let me break it down. Okay, so the Trinity, the Trinity. It's just, the Trinity is just like, a, it just means three things. It's just a fancy bro science word that I make up to remind students easily how to use a range of emotions to, to add color to their conversation to make the conversations interesting. So number one in the Trinity is positive, number two in the Trinity is negative, number three in the Trinity is sexual. And for your information, sexual, when you use a sexual expression, it's both a positive spike and a negative spike at the same time. So the sexual ones are even more, uh, more exciting than either positive or negative put together. And furthermore, you can use positive, negative, and sexual verbally or physically and all of these things can be either directed towards the girl or towards you. And furthermore, you can decide how much intensity you put behind your positive, your negative, or your sexual. The more intensity that you put behind it, the more likely you are to take a risk and get burnt. That's called playing with fire. We'll get to that in just a second. So, positives are really easy. Positives are actually really easy. So, when, you know, if you're falling into the trap of making boring conversations and you don't even know where to begin, begin with your positives. And that can just be simply things like, exaggerated statements like, oh my God, you look smashing, you're irresistible, you're, you're amazing, those kind of things. You look spectacular this evening. And for my students who are struggling to get any kind of emotional expression at all, if I get them to start with these over the top, even Austin Powers type positives, especially if you're generous with a lot of positives, pleasure to meet you, you're lovely, you're intimidating, uh, you look amazing, all of these expressions, while they may serve as a compliment to a girl, they're actually just offhand comments and they're emotional expressions more than anything to wake you up. And if you can use a really generous uh, dose of positive expressions, then you're allowed to come at the girl with some negative expressions a little bit later on. Historically in the game, you know, Mystery Method, the book, the game and stuff like that, people have fallen into the trap of using, uh, using negs way too much. And negs certainly do work, but if you balance your negs and your negative expressions towards the girl, equally, uh, you know, almost as kind of like a subordinate or a lesser than your positives, then you can well and truly use your negs really effectively, but not, uh, busy out here, but not run the risk of, um, of overdoing it, okay? Now, another huge mistake that so many of you guys get, get into is that when you go and speak to the girl, you only use your expressions uh, towards the girl. But you can arouse all the same kind of emotion and categorize yourself as an attractive type of guy by using expressions about yourself. So, the, the terminology being, being passionate, being a passionate guy, is sharing things about yourself that emotionally arouse others. Saying things like, I love that, I wanna get drunk, I love dancing. And then one thing that I get the students to play with, which is really easy to start with, anyone on, the, uh, on this video can start with it as well, is you, uh, you start making self-aggrandizing statements, okay? You say things like, I'm the strongest guy in this bar, I'm, I'm a genius, I'm extremely smooth. Any of these self-aggrandizing statements, they are positive spikes, they are emotional spikes, and they will get the conversation going. Now, the reason why, as I mentioned before, the reason why a lot of people don't do this, as the big truck comes past, is because if you say something like, you look incredible, you know, a positive directed at the girl, or I'm the smartest man in this bar, or I've got the best haircut in this bar. Obviously, just offhand positive comments. When you say either of those two things, you're essentially taking a social risk. And as this truck comes a little bit closer, if you're taking a social risk, then of course you risk losing the girl because what the girl can do, she can say, this guy's not serious, this guy's a dork, this guy's not cool. Uh, and she, you know, the, she then has the justification to walk away. If you are positively expressive towards the girl, you worry that you're giving away your power, which is not really a thing. Shh, truck. And if you make playful, self-aggrandizing statements about yourself, which are, of course, only just playful, then, truck, be quiet, truck. Then the girl can challenge you. Like, oh my God, your hair's not actually that cool, or you, there's no way you're the smartest guy in the bar. That's, that's great. You actually want that girl to engage you and to get into more banter in the conversation. And that's essentially what you call chemistry. Now, when I teach this to my guys, I also need to teach them about uh, approaching engaged. 
the guys, you know, both of my guys, sorry, all but three of my guys that I have here, they are really good guys, good guys, predictable guys, reliable guys. But the problem is they're, you know, when they would go and do these approaches, one of, one of these guys had never been to a bar before in his life, 24 year old guy, he'll, he'll come over and he'll approach really timid. Like, I don't want to tread on your toes. I'm worried about what I'm doing. Uh, I'm very self-conscious of what I'm about to say. And that's called, you know, approaching hesitant. As opposed to if you approach armed with emotional things to express yourself with, positives, negatives, sexuals, and you are expecting that they're going to come off kind of colorfully, they're going to come off with a bit of uh, banter and pizzazz, then when you go over, you're going to go over and engage, approach engaged. We call it approaching engaged. So you're going to go up, you're going to, uh, one thing that I say when I'm approaching, I'll roll over and say, hello, I'm the most eligible bachelor in this bar. And that's kind of saying I'm here to flirt, I'm single. It also screens the girl a little bit. Um, and saying the most eligible is, is a self-aggrandizing statement. Now from that, from that, the girl is going to say like, she's probably just going to shrug or uh, say, uh, well, I can see why you're single because you have bad hair or a bad shirt or something. They'll test me and I like that. I really like that because then I can get the banter going back and forth. The thing is, I'm approaching engaged. I want her to test me and I'm ready. I'm excited for an argument. It, it shows that I'm an alpha type of guy, that I like the banter and that I can deal with any, anyone's gonna, anything that anyone's gonna throw at me. I think this truck is disturbing the blog. We're gonna have to go to the next location. Where is that truck? Get out of here, truck. <laughs> Checklist, right? You want to be, you want the girl to immediately know that you're capable of using your trinity, your range of emotions, positives, negatives, and sexuals. It's really, really easy to start with the positives, and to start with the positives towards the girl is actually harder than using positives about yourself. So that's called, you know, self-aggrandizing statements, um, almost like arrogant type claims, but all of it in a bar or even on a date or even in a Tinder conversation, it's all just kind of playful stuff to get the ball rolling. And we as the, the one doing the approaching, we as the guy who's initiating the conversation, <clears throat> we need to be the ones who set the precedent. We're the one doing the approach. You're the, you're the one doing the seduction. So you have to set the precedent. Then if you can be really playful, uh, oh my God, you're so elegant. You can even be genuine about it. You can be, you're super fun to talk to. Um, just say, you're so pretty, you're intimidating. These are all positive expressions. They're pretty lighthearted and they're very kind of offhand conversational. Whoop, as I fall on a rock here. Um, but if you are generous with your positives, then you can delve into the negatives. Okay, so if you hit, if you, you know, you use say seven or eight really nice positives about yourself um, and about the girl, and then she's not really contributing that much to the conversation or she is being a little bit rude, you're allowed to actually balance that by saying, uh, you're a rude diva. Oh my God, you rude little diva, okay? Use exaggeration, use some sarcasm in your voice to be super clear that you're being playful. So calling a girl a diva, that's obviously a negative range of emotions. Um, you could then, you know, obviously say to the girl something like, I, I've, I've, I've learned to hate you now. I absolutely hate you. And even more, you know, we talk about playing with fire. Small fire is saying, I hate you, which is an I well, it's kind of like a shared thing. So if you say like, I hate, I hate girls like that, that's very much about you and not necessarily about the girl. I'm trying to think of a, a more uh, well, self-deprecating humor is something like, I'm a loser, um, I'm a failure, I'm not so good at that. Very, very Hugh Grant, 90s, 2000 movie type of humor. So they're the negatives. Um, <clears throat> and then you can, you can ramp them up uh, in term, we call it playing with fire. So if you say to the girl a negative emotion, something like, uh, you're a diva, that's a very light intensity turn of phrase that is playful that might have her kind of like swatting your arm, say, like laughing, giggling, and saying, you're a jerk, like you kind of playfully back. But on, on a more aggressive level, 
more fire to play with. You could say, <clears throat> uh, <laughs> like, you're, you're an outright bitch, right? And if delivered with the right tone, and you've already set a big precedent of lighthearted, funny, and positive stuff, both towards you and the girl, and even if you say some really, uh, if you use negative emotions about yourself, like, I'm the world's number one loser, I'm a virgin, I'm never gonna get laid ever again, well, I've never, I've never been laid and I never will, and then you say, oh my God, you're a, you're a, you're a, tr <laughs> you're a trophy wife bitch. That's a huge neg, but it does have its place in the conversation. And of course she's gonna say, you can't say that. That's crazy. That's out of control. You're in my bad books now. And that's great, right? Now let's kind of zoom out here a little bit and realize that even if you have the balls to have these kind of conversations with attractive girls at the bar, it shows that you're a ballsy guy who can remain engaged argue or deal with the arguments and the banter and the aggression that's going to come from the girl and her friends and whatever's going on around you. It just shows that you're a certain type of confident character. And that means, you know, the way the girl feels towards you is that you're the kind of guy who can handle complicated situations, who can handle emotional pressure and is not intimidated by women, has an abundance with women, and is certainly not uh, scarce with women. So you're just categorizing yourself well. Remember that Girls and women are attracted to behavior, they're not attracted to looks. So it is in the way that you open your mouth and share yourself, that's gonna be the way in which she categorizes you and becomes attracted to you. So, you, you, uh, you know, I've seen it a thousand times, I've seen it a million times when I, or one of my students, one of my mates, they have the ability to say quite edgy and aggressive playing with fire type of things. Um, the girl starts to really light up because the more you say, the more you confirm to her that you're the kind of guy that she hopes to get, the kind of guy that she's glad to be getting attention from. And it's, you know, even then, it's not so much that she's attracted to what you're saying. The process that's going on in her mind and emotions is that you, if you're a confident guy and you can say all of these things and you can deal with all the repercussions and you're, you, you know, you're playing a win-win game you're politically correct and diplomatic in the way that you deliver these edgy things that you're saying. She's not thinking I'm attracted to him. She's thinking I, I love, she's very internally focused. I love that I'm getting attention from an important guy, right? So she's like, oh, that's an important guy. I wanna be getting attention from an important guy. It's not like she likes you, James the guy or whoever you're gonna be out there. So. Let's just kind of like even switch it back now a little bit more. So on a, a, like a much more aggressive way to say a positive emotion is something really passionate. Now, if you say to the girl uh, in the bar, oh my God, I'm so incredibly attracted to you. Um, I'm having thoughts about taking you home and sleeping with you, pulling your hair. I'm imagining you in your underwear. That's extremely positive, extremely intense, and of course, very emotional. It's also, you know, going to the sexual realm of expressions. I gotta talk about physical expressions as well. Um, we'll get to that in a second. So, <clears throat> when you go into that kind of realm, it takes incredible balls to say that because you're basically saying, I desire you, and you're setting up a situation where the girl can say, you can never have me, where she can reject you, and things like that. And that is why so many guys don't go in the direction of what we call passion, and aggressive passion, and saying, I want you now, I admire you, I, I die for an opportunity to spend more time with you. You're allowed to say these things. In a way, some people think that it's giving away your power, but in a more important, in a bigger way, it's you showing that you've got the balls and the heart and the passion and the emotion to say special things that another guy wouldn't even have the confidence to say. And yes, the girl can reject you, but if you can kind of deal with that rejection because you've said a kind of unrealistic, over the top, crazy thing anyway, then, but the girl will think about it. She'll go away and think about it. And if you exchange Instagrams, if you exchange WhatsApp, then she's gonna, you know, she's gonna text you if, you know, logistics and marital status permits. So, talk about sexual in just a second. Because sexual is even more complicated. And when, you know, when I'm coaching Four Week Natural or when I'm coaching you uh, on a live program, it's all well and good to understand these concepts, but then it comes down to turn of phrase. Turn of phrase. What are good, uh, tasteful, measured things to say that are not gonna, you know, not gonna get you slapped in the face or a glass of water thrown on you. Basically, people are very forgiving in a party situation, in a bar situation, so you are actually allowed to 
take some risks, have some fun. And honestly, you're only ever gonna learn from your mistakes. You're never gonna learn from the truck is back. Ah. You're never gonna learn from playing it safe and not kind of going beyond your comfort zone and beyond your previous repertoire. You need to extend yourself. Now, let's talk a bit about physicality and the, the trinity in physicality, the positives, the negatives, and the sexual when it comes to physical communication. It is not even 8 a.m. here and I am getting sunburned, but I guess that's to be expected on a Mexican beach as the summer's approaching week by week, the days are getting hotter, the days are getting longer, the weather's getting warmer, it's pretty crazy. And uh, it's been a quiet month in February, which is uh, you know, expected given the, the situation in the world, travel restrictions, and uh, kind of college is going back. But yeah, so now we're talking about um, physical, positive, negative, and physical. And they're actually really simple because physical, there's, you know, you can be much more kind of complicated and nuanced with, with how you express yourself in language. But with physicality, it's quite simple. Things like, you know, if you can conjure the bravery to give a girl a hug, that's a positive. But some of the negatives are harder to do. Things like kind of nudging the girl away a little bit, turning your back to her in the conversation, doing things like shh, those kind of things, those are negative expressions. And again, it just shows you you've got the balls to do that. And you can be sure that if you do some of these things, she's gonna say, shh, yourself. Um, she's gonna say, oh my God, you can't do that. She's even gonna kind of wrestle back a little bit. And it's so beautiful when you do these physicality negs, the girl gets so excited because she thinks, yes, finally, he's a fun guy who's taken interest in me. Uh, he's setting a precedent where I can have some fun. They're, re they're actually really good and really talented and experienced at being sassy. So you give them an opportunity to do something that they're good at and like doing. It's win, 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 right? More positives is like blowing a kiss. Another positive that I do all the time is I'll, you know, I'll shake the girl's hand and then I'll do a Morticia kiss, which is like kiss all the way up her arm until she's like, what the fuck? Um, while I'm doing a lot of these things, I'll also use the phrase, you never told me to stop. You never, you never told me to stop, right? Uh, <laughs> another thing I'll do is yeah, kind of a negative expression. Or more, no, this is more of a sexual expression in the physical sense. We shake the girl's hand um, and I shake the girl's hand and then we do a handcuff, right? So we kind of hold her wrist and I say, do I have consent to give me a high five? And then we'll take the girl's hand and we'll slap us off on the face. That's a negative expression, but she's implementing it. All right, and then um, <laughs> then another thing is what we'll say, and this one's more edgy, we'll say, do I have your consent for you to slap my cheek? And then we'll get her hand and slap our butt, or I'll slap my own butt and then get her to do it as well. Because that is, that is really important that you have consent with something like that. Even just getting the girl to slap you on the side of the bum, that is naughty. It's widely socially acceptable, but it is one thing that could be a problem. So you have to be really clever very sensitive and very open in your conversation about consent in this day and age. It's better to be intelligent and wise about these things than ever take a risk that you shouldn't. So, you know, even, you know, bringing up that topic in a world where consent and barriers are so important, it stifles you even more because you don't know what you're allowed to say, what you should say, what you shouldn't say, where you're crossing your line. I'd say explore it, okay? Because as long as you know that you're a good-willed person, and that, especially if you're coming from a history of being extremely uh, introverted and keeping to yourself and worried about doing wrong by people, if you go up and start initiating expression, they're gonna be coming from a place of fun and playfulness and self-expression rather than manipulation or control or anything negative like that. So sexual expressions are things, you know, sexual physical expressions. We'll get to the verbal sexual expressions last because they're the most dangerous and exciting and powerful to be honest. Sexual expressions are things where, you know, you say to the girl, we say a lot of, the, one line that we use all the time is, I thought you wanted to hug, hold hands, link arms, make out, dance, whatever. So I'll say to the girl, I'll step up to her and almost be touching nose on nose uh, in a way that is, is very, you know, it's like a sexual simulation. And look her deep in the eyes, I'll have my hand on her lower back, on her shoulder, those kind of things, bringing up all these sexual vibes and thoughts and alluding to the, the sexual possibilities between the two of us. Oh man, it is hot up here. And the, uh, you can see the tide is coming up as well. We've got to protect the camera. So those things, you know, a lot of guys, you might get into a really good conversation with the girl, but then you think, oh shit, I need to go for the makeout. I don't know how to make the next move. 
simply because you lack the balls. Remember that a girl, she gets dressed up. She puts the dress on, does her hair, goes to the gym because she wants to be desired. And in part, it's, it's your job to do it, but she wants to be desired in general. She wants to be a desirable person. She wants to definitely not be undesirable. And if you can come along and fulfill that role because you're brave enough that you can deal with pressure from other guys, kind of com competitive vibes and pressure from other guys to, to go for that attractive girl. And one of, the, one of the big reasons why guys are kind of intuitively and hormonally hesitant to make these moves is because you're worried that some other guy's gonna come along, grab a rock off the beach and smash you in the head. But if you do have the, the balls and the bravery, the confidence and the, um, the dashing spirit to make a move, to simply make a move, the girl thinks, yes, here's a guy who's man enough, who's man within himself uh, to make moves. And I'm, I'm valued by that guy who's got, who's got the moves, who's got the confidence. So it's really all about how the girl feels about herself rather than how great you are in yourself. You just need to be alpha category, not beta category. So we'll get one more angle and then we'll talk about sexual verbal expressions, a little bit about tests, and then that'll wrap us up for today. Right out here. I like these like lifeguard boxes and you know, the, the shape of the, the beach and the sea, it's nice. And uh, the now, getting a little bit later in the day, all the Karens of the world will be able to hear me talking about sexual language and seduction on the beach. I should get some bad looks if I, if I keep at it long enough. But, so with, with your sexual expressions, if you, say, if you say to the girl, I'm thinking about taking you home, it's a, a much bigger and more powerful expression to use with the girl, even though that's kind of a low key turn of phrase. That's both all of the positive excitement about sex and intimacy and, you know, in, uh, sex, basically, um, in the purest sense of the word. And also, it's naughty. Do you have, you know, who are you to say that? And um, that's so over the top and you're overstepping your bounds and things like that. But if you can even bring that up in conversation, even though that might be like a low energy and a very kind of low key turn of phrase, that's actually a very, very strong um, emotional expression that'll hit the girl really hard and she will always be kind of taken aback and when she's taken aback she's gonna say you can't say that how dare you uh, who do you think you are but at the same time she's gonna be oh my god he's brave he's confident he values me um, he admires me I like that somebody's making a fuss over me so that's one way of saying it another thing you can say to the girl is like we we used to do it up oh, water waves are coming in um, we used to do this all the time we'd say that we say to the girl that uh-oh, <laughs> the waves are coming. Um, we say to the girl that, you know, we blame her for, for seducing us. It's like, can, like, stay back, demon woman, stay back, witch. You're seducing me, you're using all of your seductive powers, your breasts, your hips, your lips, your eye contact. Quit it, okay? I'm not just a piece of meat. I'm not just an Australian accent who you can, you know, objectify and take home. I'm not your plaything. All of these kind of things bring up this kind of conversation and it's very, it's not only about her, but it's about you as well. So, you know, I said earlier in this conversation, you can use your trinity towards the girl, or you can use the trinity towards yourself. Both are good, but it is easier for you to start with using the trinity about yourself. Um, but then when you go into sexual, it can be very with, these with statements to do, I wanna do this with you, or this is gonna happen with us, as opposed to, you're different from me or I'm different from you. It's like we're in this together. Now, of course, things like plot lines, I imagine getting married with you in Vegas, going on a honeymoon to you with, honeymoon with you to Ibiza and having a, you know, the most, the most sexual honeymoon in the history of honeymoons. All of this is just, you know, it's kind of like chick lit. It's very low consciousness, but it's very high, high emotionally. It's, it's risky language to have because you are going to get tests, but if you can, deliver these lines knowing that you're going to get tests, then you're going to start the banter, okay? It's also self-amusement. If, you know, logistically, it's always very, very hard to get laid, uh, at least on the first day. It can be done, of course it can be done, but it's hard to get laid. So if you, you know, walk into the bar and you're, you're realizing that I'm probably logistically not going to get laid tonight, but you go in and you play with this fire, you use these emotional terms of praise. 
Uh-oh. You hear that? <laughs> We're getting some water up in here. Uh, the tide is coming in. Uh-oh. Then, <laughs> then, um, you self-amuse, you have this bubbling effect inside of you because you know that you're basically casting a spell on people around you and they're going to wiggle and react and you're giving, you're giving them a really good time, you're giving them a really good range of emotions that they otherwise wouldn't get for themselves. Of course, you know, we guys are stifled. Girls are like five times more stifled in starting conversations with guys and then getting emotional and passionate and bantery in a conversation with a guy. So. Um, I really, I wanted to bring up all of these points. You are going to get tests. And you know what? The next video, the next video that I'm going to do next week is going to be all about tests. And by you using a range of emotions, the trinity, the positive, the negative, and the sexual, the trinity uh, physically, positive, negative, and sexual, on text message, especially when you're making positive statements about you and her, negative kind of confrontations or cold reads about you or her, and then, you know, some sexual kind of role play or projections, this works on Tinder game, text game, Instagram game really well as well. So, a whole lot of ideas here. I guess the simple thing that I want you to take away from this is just remember the word Trinity. Three things, start with positives, add negatives, and when you're feeling brave, go into sexual and you know include that physicality as well. So, any questions, let me know. You know, one thing, one question that I wanna ask everyone here in the group, everyone here on the Four Week Natural channel, what's easier for you? verbal trinity or physical trinity? A hug or a passionate statement? A lot of people actually have trouble with finding the right words in the right situation without freaking themselves out. But what's easier for you? Okay, let's get a conversation going. And in the conversation, I can give you a whole lot of examples of what's good and what's bad. I really like this little kind of lifeguard box thing, like the California ones, but a Mexican one. And I'm getting double sun over here, sun in the sky and sun off the ocean. So. Guys, I'm coming to Austin, Texas, March the 18th, and this will be the first time that I've been in the United States for one year, and I'm actually gonna be doing two programs in a row. There's only a couple of places that are conducive to doing programs in the world right now, and that will be Austin, and uh, you know, pray for all the, the horrible things that are happening in Austin right now, the, the deep freeze that happened, all the water pipes have broken, um, the water shortages, electricity shortages, it's crazy. But come March 18th, I'm gonna be there. I'm gonna be starting the first of two consecutive four week natural zzzs because there's been a kind of a pent up demand because I couldn't finish my program there last year and there's extra demand for another program there this year. So I'm gonna be doing two in a row, two in a row. And what that means is that for one of the first occasions ever, you'll be able to sign up and attend four week natural, the first one in March, starting on March the 18th and then you'll be able to attend the second one for free. So what's actually happening is guys are coming down from Canada, uh, guys are coming in from Los Angeles. Unfortunately, no guys can come in from Europe. Although, you know, if you're European, you can fly to Mexico, you can stay in Mexico for 14 days, and then you can fly into the United States. That's the rule. So guys are coming in, and they're gonna be working remotely from Austin, which is starting to get really nice and warm with these lovely spring vibes, going into summer by the time that I leave there at the end of you know, I'll be leaving there in June, actually. No, May, I'll be leaving there in May. Um, so you can get training with me the first month and then participate in a second four-week natural for free on the second month, okay? That doesn't suit everybody's lifestyle, but this is gonna be your one chance to work with me in the United States on this continent while I'm here right now. Uh, and then I'm going back overseas, back to Europe, back to Asia, back to Australia for about 16 months. And I honestly don't know when I'll be back and we don't know what's happening with the the whole world international travel situation. So this is your chance. This is your chance to get involved and it's as simple as sending us an email, making an application, doing into an interview with me so that I can ensure that you're a proficient communicator and that you'll fit in with the ethos of the group to make sure that you have the mentality, the positive mentality to participate in the group in the right kind of ways. And it's, you know, it's five weeks of training, six night game sessions, six day game sessions, four one-on-ones, eight seminars, and then all the bonus sessions that you get because you get to go out with the other students uh, when, uh, when I'm coaching the other groups. And of course, you can follow through for a sixth week, seventh week, eighth week, ninth week, 10th week, 
And if you're working remotely, as so many people around the world are right now, you can do your weekends with me rather than doing your weekends in the cold cities like New York or Minneapolis or Toronto or Calgary or you know, even Denver, these places that are just freezing right now. So guys, really good to talk to you. Smash like if you learned something from this video. Answer the question, what's easier for you? Physical trinity or verbal trinity. And uh, look forward to the next video next week, which is gonna be about tests, how to make, how to generate tests, how to generate tests well, how to deal with them, and how to get into a really cool test loop. And that test loop is gonna be good to uh, drive banter, drive attraction, and keep you amused and engaged all the way throughout the interaction. Alex from The Four Week Natural, catch you next time.